A marvellous invention, a device that allows the consumer to drink his beverage far from where the beverage was initially poured. Cylindrical, simple, outstanding. Though there once was a time, not so long ago, before this glorious invention worked its marvels into the beverage consuming world, for many, many years in fact, people were forced to drink without a cup. There have been immense studies into the so-called pre caporic era. Historians, beauticians, and anthropologists from all over the world have concocted theories as to how prehistoric anthropoids once drank. One of the more popular theories was the epidermal vibrato, or lapping method, which involved the extension of one's tongue, followed by vigorous lapping movements, usually in the presence of water. Another more adventurous idea is the Froesha catcher wall, or throw and catch method. Simple in theory, difficult in execution. And of course, the dunk. While these methods did achieve some degree of liquid absorption, the quaffing process was in dire need of revolution. This revolution was inspired by one of the greatest scientific minds in recorded history, Jonathan Carpenter. Jonathan Carpenter, a great Great man, loved by people and dogs alike. Carpenter was history's greatest innovator. I remember when I was five years old and my great grandfather sat me on his lap and, and told me the story of Carpenter. It was simpler back then. A time of trees and birds and great times. It's on a day just like today. Axe in hand, Carpenter headed into the great forest on one of his regular chopping expeditions. He loved chopping. Everywhere he went, he chopped. After much walking and chopping, he stopped. It was as if fate or destiny was trying to tell him something. Drink, it said. So Cuppenden fell to his knees and started to drink from the lake. But no! He just couldn't quench his thirst. His frustration grew until he could take it no more. And he threw his axe into the water. My axe, he said, and he attempted to grasp it with both hands, but he missed. Then something happened. As his hands came up out of the lake, they contained within them the water he wished to consume. Ideas started rushing into the bearded man's head, and he ran off into the forest and wasn't seen again for five days. When he returned, he had a device made of leaves and twigs. Ooh. He dipped this device into the stream ah. and drank from it. Oh. It was a great day in the history of kitchen utensils. She's a beauty, isn't she? Ever since I heard the story of Cupton and his cups, I've just been amazed by the cup in its smooth, luscious form. This is an exact replica of Cupton's infamous first cup, but the cup has come a long way throughout history. The cup of Christ, the holy grail that he drank from before his crucifixion. In modern times, athletes have competed for big, giant, oversized cups. When the first bra cup came out, people gasped with astonishment. Who could forget little Donny Bradman playing out in his backyard with just his golf ball and cup? I've collected cups from all over the world. The Cupoltino from Italy. The Friskopovsky from Russia. But this, this is my favorite cup of all. I call her Alice. The cup hasn't always been the toast of human celebration. This is one of history's greatest shamozzles. The mug. An outrage to everything Cupperton set out to achieve. Charles Mugsworthy. Renowned for being the untalented scheming thief who invented the mug. Mugsworthy's aura of criminal stupidity was so pronounced that mug related phrases became used to describe theft and stupidity. 
Oh, you stupid mug! Mugsworthy stumbled upon Cupperton's invention and tried to label it his own by attaching this handle to the side of the cup. But it was useless, as you could still hold the cup without it. See? He was ridiculed by every townsfolk who knew the truth that not only did Cupperton invent the cup, but the Mugsworthy was only stealing his device to take the fame the Cupperton deserved. No mug, no mug, no mug. Mugsworthy became enraged with jealousy and attempted to kill Cupperton and claimed the invention is his own. <coughs> Fortunately, he was apprehended and the police issued a picture of Mugsworthy to be drawn in case of escape to aid in his recapture. The term used for this method is still used today. The mugshot. The cup, much like the light bulb and the automobile, is the vice that many people take for granted. It has evolved a long way since one man's simple idea to a device that's used all around the world on a daily basis. Although it has evolved immensely since its humble beginnings, one thing has not changed. The wonder of Jonathan Carpenter's vision. I don't want to live in a world where people look into their drink and all they see is juice or, or cordial. I want people to look deeper into their cup and see a man, a great, great man who said, no, this is not the way we have to drink. Yeah. Cheers.